Hey guys, Christo Garcia, My Swing Evolution. Man, I am so excited to head back to California today, but I was so inspired yesterday by watching Bryson DeChambeau and Justin Rose hoist trophies that I had to make a video because I see some similar things in their swings, but also vast differences. So I hope you'll like this video, and if you like this content, please subscribe, tap a like, and leave a comment if you find something interesting or if you'd like to let us know your thoughts. So I am excited that I'm going to be having my big 50th birthday bash in mid-March. We are going to have the big MSE golf tournament just like we did last year. It's gonna be a four-man scramble tournament. Now, Team Jamie with the, the Ninjas, they took it down last year, but this is gonna be really, really cool, and I want it to be totally huge. So keep that in mind, and it will be preceded by an all-day intensive on Saturday. So this will be an MSE golf weekend getaway that you will never forget. Okay, now, in addition to uh, Justin Rose and Bryson DeChambeau, I will be coming out with a bunch of videos from the PGA Tour show that I just did. You're going to absolutely love it. But please, enjoy this video, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about these guys' golf swings. They are amazing. All right, let's get down to business with Justin Rose and Bryson DeChambeau's golf swings. Let's just take a look at both of them side to side real quick. So I wanted to make this video. They both had amazing weekends. Justin Rose is looking like the best player in the world. And I'll tell you, Bryson DeChambeau is right on his heels. But the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I'm very curious uh, about their swings. They have uh, similar swings in the sense that they stay really steady. They don't move off the ball at all. And they really, with their irons, work around their left leg post uh, very, very beautifully. And this is something I'm very interested in. Um, I got to become friends with one of the guys that created uh, TrackMan, one of the uh, European tour pros. I was at the PGA show, and he opened my eyes to a number of things about uh, TrackMan and the new ball flight laws. But as we look at these guys, we'll just watch it one more time, and then I'm going to break them both down. Uh, again, to the naked eye, I thought they were very similar, but there's some very big differences when you look at them up close. So there's a lot of things they do that are similar, but there's a lot of things they do that are quite different. So we'll look one more time. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's start with Bryson here. He is... Uh, I love his nickname, the Mad Scientist, um, because he is just always trying to find uh, the optimum way to play the game in all facets. And here I am, you know, I've been playing this game my whole life, and I'm still obsessed with it. So you, it's a, a game that allows us to work in this manner for our entire lives. And um, it is just so cool what he's doing. I think he's absolutely wonderful for the game. So let's look at this setup. Now, I believe so strongly that your address position, the structure you build into it, is what is going to give you success in a golf swing. You don't really ever see a great golfer with a bad address position. I can be on the driving range, and before I see anybody swing, I can tell virtually their level of, of play before they even take the club back. But we've got some really curious things here. The first thing I'm going to point out about Bryson, um, you know, he's obviously got a great setup, left side higher than his right. Uh, he's a single plane swinger, uh, somewhat reminiscent of Mo Norman, except uh, he's, he's much more upright, I think, in the way he takes the club back. But notice how weak his left hand is. His left hand is so weak that you can see his thumb exposed under his right hand. That's very, very rare. And we'll see that it's quite different when we get to Justin Rose. But one of the things I've discovered is when you talk about the bow in the wrist, the bow in the lead wrist is easier to create when you have a weak hand. Uh, the, the wrist is not nearly strong enough to handle the, the torque um, and the force that's coming from the rotation of the body. So I think that's why we see the flex in the wrist, that bowed wrist at impact from players like Hogan and Bryson DeChambeau. 
In fact, Hogan hid the weakness of his left hand the way he positioned the club vertically. So there was a little cup in the back of his wrist, so it didn't appear as weak. But as we watch Bryson take this club back, we're going to see that he really extends the arms. So if he had a towel under his right elbow, that thing's probably going to fall to the ground. He really reaches away, creating a wide arc on the takeaway. And you can also notice the Steve Stricker-esque uh, lack of wrist hinge as he turns to the top. There's still practically no wrist hinge. It's almost like he's fighting wrist hinge. Now, again, as I mentioned, the wrist is not going to be strong enough to withstand the force. So as the last link in the chain, we're going to see some lag created on the downswing. But here he is at the top of the backswing, and he's stayed very centered and not moved off of the ball. Almost like he's a little stacky on the left side. And with an iron, it was important for me to find two irons so I could compare both of these gentlemen. And as he makes his transition, we will see a load down into the ground. And again, those wrists are still, there's not a ton of lag. You know, but here he is coming into the ball and he makes a, a beautiful motion through the ball. Now, there was a, you know, I heard Jack say something that was really remarkable to me. That he said, well, you know, if you're trying to hit the ball as far as you can, don't you want the biggest circle you can make on the way down? He's famous for saying you can't um, release the, the club too early. But here we see Bryson making a, a, a rather big circle. He's not whipping the club as much as the, uh, you know, say a Sergio Garcia would. And then he rotates, you know, high up onto that left leg. In fact, if we look at his, his left foot, um, when he goes after those big drives, he really spins out on that heel like he's an MLB baseball player. You know, we see that left heel just uh, turning over. But very, very interesting indeed to watch. And I'll tell you, the mad scientist, he's, he's threatening some people. I really think that he might... I mean, we're talking about six wins. Bryson's won four of his last nine starts. This is one of the greatest golfers in the world presently. And he's a very young man. Don't you remember? It was only a couple of years ago, like 2016, that he left SMU early to turn pro. And boy, I am so excited for the majors this year. This is going to be crazy, crazy cool as that long Hogan style follow through. It's just awesome. It's so good for the game, in my opinion. So let's take a look at Mr. Rose here. I, I like Justin Rose's golf swing. I think it's just one of the best on tour. Yeah, he just hits all these great classic positions. So let's take a look here. First off, let's look at his left hand. I mean, that is a, a very strong grip. Looks like he's, I would say he's probably hitting a five iron here. And um, yeah, that uh, left hand is rotated on the top of the handle. So what that's going to allow him to do is he's going to hinge that club much earlier. And now also, if we take a look, let's notice his right elbow. Now, if he was doing the connection drill with a towel or a head cover under that uh, in that right armpit, that thing's not going anywhere. So here he's using his torso as the engine. Maybe there's a little bit of lift there at the top of the backswing. Looks like we have even a little cup at the top of the backswing. And then we're going to see him move laterally into the ball. Now these guys are very rotational, but you can't I just don't think you can take the lateral move out of the golf swing. We want that lateral move. And here he comes down. His legs look rather straight. And that left leg, the straightening of this left leg is very important for leverage up the, the lead side of the body. Uh, I talk about lead side leverage and that left leg straightening pulls the slack out of the golf swing and whips that club through the bottom. Nice square strike. 
and we'll see he allows the the toe to roll over a little bit um jack did many of the classic swingers did that i noticed it yesterday at tory pines he hit an iron and as the club uh exited through his left shoulder you know there was a little uh the, the toe was a little turned over but again it's long long after the ball is gone so it's not a bad thing what we want to do is make sure that it's square through the strike uh, but some people will hold it off longer than others you i don't think i've ever seen hogan really have the toe over so this is really the main reason why i wanted to make this video what i put a circle around both these guys heads and I wanted to see how much they move off the ball at all. We probably remember those videos of Sean Foley working with Tiger Woods where he held a golf club up to the, the um, left side of his head to make sure that he didn't load into his right side as much. And so I was curious to see if they stayed totally stacked or if they moved off a little bit. So let's take a look at both of these gents. Even though Bryson isn't completely straight on, I think we can get a pretty good idea of his head motion uh, in relation to the ball. And that's a, a the head relationship to where the ball is in the structure of the swing is absolutely crucial, you know, because the shoulders are going to rotate around the neck. So we're going to take the club back. So look at how much more Justin Rose is cocking his wrist. He's already, you know, at basically club shaft parallel and his hands aren't even at his hips yet. Whereas Bryson's going to extend the arms and make a wide, wide circle. So I think that's what Bryson's doing, is he's creating power with a bigger circle. Yeah, so look at that. So it looks like Bryson even is, is, is even getting into staying deep left. He even moves left a little bit. And it looks like Rose moves off a, just a hair. I mean, you almost can't help it because... You're rotating your whole torso into your right leg. You know, so Rose moves off the ball just a touch. Bryson really, really stays pressed against the left wall in his swing. And then we can also note that they both have a small amount of dip. Now, I got into a uh, conversation with a, a very interesting golfer just the other day he he told me that bryson does not dip and uh i wasn't sure if if that was true or not um but there's a little bit of dip and we're really going to see it here he he doesn't leverage into the ground as much as most people i mean that's for sure he's not a trevino or you know one of those guys but see how their heads both drop now rose we're going to see that he gets left his he he has a small weight shift, but he's going to get left. Now their bills are both underneath the circle. And they're both going to rotate through the ball. I think that this comparison photo is, is just fantastic. Um, I think they look similar in this position. I think that's what my eyeball was catching as they go through the ball. That they're very similar in that aspect. But... Let's look at Justin. We're going to notice that he has a little move backwards, creating spine tilt. That head is moving backwards as the hips are driving through. That's uh, similar to a longer. But we're going to notice that it looks like Bryson, he is staying glued on that spot. And that's allowing his body to rotate around and strike the ball. Uh, let's also pay attention to these wrists. So let's take a look at how Justin Rose allows the club to roll over a bit. Now, Justin Rose had, had that strong grip. So look at he's rolling the knuckles down. It doesn't look like he's got that strong a grip here. So he's allowing the club to go over. But let's watch Bryson. It looks, even though this isn't super slow-mo, it looks like Bryson is still holding off his release much more than Justin Rose is. Now let's take a moment to also, I want you to key in on the left foot. They're pressing down into the ground, but unlike Mr. Hogan, who kept his left foot flat, and also George Knudsen, 
they are going to allow the foot to roll and spin on the outside of the left heel. See that with their left foot? Very interesting. And that's when you're, the guys today are much more rotational. And um, the old idea, I'll tell you, this is, I had a dream about this the other night. One of the, the, the last phases of my really, really bad golf, I kept hearing people like Johnny Miller saying, you have to swing down the line, swing down the target line and keep that face as square as long as possible. There are no straight lines in a circle. And that really messed me up. But seeing these guys, they are very rotational. So they're letting the club swing around in a circle. Now the, another video queued up here. Let's, let's look at this with a, a different line. I've got a line up the wall, their left side. I've got a line on the side of their left hip. So we're gonna see where they move through the swing in relation to this. Now this is the main point that I was curious about. Are they, are they loading off the ball into their right leg? And I know that uh, Justin Rose does it a little bit, but it's not very much. But once again, we see that Bryson is maintaining his contact with that, with that left side wall. So you get to the top. Now as they make their transition, now even though I'm saying these guys are more rotational, this move is absolutely key. The average tour player, their center of gravity moves forward at impact four and a half inches. So this is crucial to get the swing bottom forward in the swing so you catch ball first and divot after. Where's the uh, low point in the swing for a golfer? Four inches or more in front of the ball. Those two things are related. So here we go into strike, right shoulder under, and they rotate left and they stand up tall on that left side so we're seeing a lot of similar things I, I'll tell you we're gonna have some battles this year these guys coming down the stretch so I hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about uh, the golf swing and how these guys are executing it if you'd like to learn more about how I look at the golf swing the Hogan code is available at myswingevolution.com and uh, that's, uh, that's the most complete version of how I see the golf swing, at least through the Hogan method. And I hope you hit them long, and I hope you hit them straight. Guys, so let's cut to the chase. Here's my old golf swing. And here's my new golf swing. Five years ago, I started a YouTube channel and I wanted to improve my golf swing by using Ben Hogan's five lessons. Well, guess what? It worked. And along the way, I picked up over 8 million views on YouTube and I learned how to shoot under par. Unbelievable, right? Well, the great news is I have a brand new instructional video called The Hogan Code. In this video, I break down everything that I learned over my long journey to learn to swing like Ben Hogan. And now you can learn the very same techniques that I use to become the golfer I always wanted to be.